Uh, welcome to a new video and in this video I want to do a little comparison about stabilization and vlogging kits and I start out with something that's a bit unusual because it's like a five plus year old camera the Sony XDR 3000 and as you can see here I have one of the smallest tripods that I could find put on it and what I want to do is start vlogging with it and compare its stabilization system with the stabilization system of modern smartphones. We have smartphones like the LG Wing that I have somewhere here in my pocket that has a gimbal-like stabilization. It's a virtual gimbal, so not really a gimbal camera. And I'm recording currently this little introduction with a smartphone, the Huawei Mate X. S. And I can show you this right now because I'm filming with my Sony and I can show you exactly how I'm recording this with the Mate XS and why I like the Mate XS so much because I have a selfie screen and can use the rear cameras on it. This is how it looks like and it's really really cool so you can see the rear cameras and myself here in the frame and I have a microphone attached there as well that goes directly here to my collar. So this is the setup I'm using. So let's try to compare those stabilization systems and let's get started. Now I'm recording with the Sony XDR3000 and I'm using the little gimbal a little bit uh, a little bit extended and using a microphone because this little camera has a microphone. It's recording at 1080p 50 frames per second. This is the European PAL standard here. I cannot choose 60 frames per second. I can only choose 60 frames in 4K because this camera can also do 4K. This is the usual vlogging setup that I use. So the speed that I'm walking, even the, yeah, the walkway that I usually take for doing vlogs and uh, this is the BOSS system, the gimbal-like system inside of the XDR3000. The XDR3000 is running now with the sun in the back so you might get sun flare and you might get some issues there so let's maybe put it a little bit around like this, maybe it's better. Uh, anyway, the XDR3000 has three different modes. One is the ultra wide angle mode that I'm not using, which uh, yeah, is I think a little bit too fish eye. -y. What I'm using here right now is the middle mode. So this is like gives me still an ultra wide angle feeling, but it's cropping in a little bit. You get less of this fish eye distortion, and the stabilization works a little bit better. And I have also a narrow field of view that crops in even more. Um, and maybe I can test this out as well. But first of all, what do you think about this kind of stabilization here with the Sony XDR3000? Is it good enough? Let's maybe walk like this. I think it is pretty awesome that you can have such a little camera that can record unlimited basically until the memory card is full or the battery is empty uh, without any big issue uh, you have a very small gimbal the camera is very very small a gimbal no you don't have a gimbal you have a very small tripod the camera is very small it's lightweight I don't have any issues carrying it in my hand carrying it in my pocket even start vlogging the only thing that it misses is like a zoom function so the only thing that you have is the crop function and of course there's no autofocus so if I put my hand here probably if I close it up a little bit has no real autofocus there, has no, no autofocus at all, so it's fixed focus, everything basically in focus, but for a vlog I think it might be okay as long as you don't have to show uh, little things in front of the camera. Otherwise this device is yeah, five years plus old already I would say when it first came out and uh, yeah it might be not the best when it comes to HDR and the colors and uh, such things so you need to be a bit careful with this and also the microphone in some revisions at least if you don't update the firmware might get a little bit hot running hot but I'm using the Sony microphone here I hope it is not doing this otherwise uh, yeah uh, sorry for the loud audio and uh, what I want to do now is compare it with the LG Wings gimbal camera. So let me just put out, this is the cool thing about uh, doing podcasts and uh, vlogs. I can just get the LG Wing out of my pocket here and show you the 
is the stabilization working? I hope it is. The gimbal camera on the LG Wing. Now this is the LG Wing. The top camera here is a very well features a very large sensor, an ultra wide angle sensor, and that is used for a virtual gimbal. And we want to try this out now on a little tripod as well, a smartphone vlogging selfie stick basically. To now, let's let's see why. So this is now the gimbal camera of the LG Wing and this is what you get when you have it like you know, almost if you're holding it almost with your hands. So what I will do is just like stretch it out a little bit with my selfie stick and I think this way it looks a lot better and you get a lot wider field of view. And this is the stabilization that you can get with the LG Wing in wing mode. And this is also I think take the opportunity to change my hand. This was a big wobble I think. Uh, grab my XDR 3000, turn it on, and I can show you now how ridiculous it looks like. It looks like this. So here you have the the, the LG Wings gimbal-like setup. So you have to have it in T-shape, and this is the uh, setup that I'm using right now for vlogging. But what do you think about the colors what do you think about the stabilization how does it perform in contrast or in comparison to the uh, real boss like image optical image stabilization from the xdr 3000 that would be very interesting to know also i'm using the microphone with a little usb-c to three and a half millimeter adapter because you have to have this for recording audio and uh, i know that i have to boost the audio a little bit because here the audio coming a little bit too low at least with this microphone here and uh, yeah this is a nice little interesting test of this lg wing camera system and it's virtual gimbal. Sadly I don't have a real gimbal camera because there's also a real gimbal camera nowadays. The Vivo X60 and X70 uh, lineup has a real gimbal inside of a smartphone camera which is pretty interesting as well but I didn't get it. Uh, it's pretty expensive you have to import the Vivo X70 Plus Pro Plus and yeah I didn't get it but this is what you can get in terms of stabilization with the LG Wing. I think the LG Wing works pretty cool and can be also used maybe for action shots. If you want to use something for action shots and stay behind the camera, you can just hold it in your hand and then run around and do some action shots with it. So what do you think about this? This would be the LG Wing with its internal microphones and holding it in arm's length. And I think it's a little bit too close for vlogging, but the gimbal mode would work fine for vlogging as well, I would say. Uh, if LG would do a software update where it uh, does allow us to go a little bit, zoom out a little bit on this cropped sensor. Even though we get like a little bit of fisheye effect, this would be perfect for vlogging as well. And what we want to do now is compare it with something, yeah, a smartphone that is put on a gimbal, has electronic image stabilization and then even put on the gimbal to see how this performs in comparison and if it's good for vlogging. Uh, one thing I missed to say is of course this camera, this gimbal camera on the LG Wing also doesn't have any autofocus at all. So you have still the same issue as on the XDR3000. There's no autofocus option. So we're now recording with the Sony Xperia 1 Mark III and a Xeon Smooth X2 axis gimbal. How does this look like in terms of stabilization and in terms of colors and so on. I want to show you how it looks like in my hands right now. So let's get my LG Wing here in gimbal mode and I'll show you how the Smooth X is working here on the Xperia 1 Mark III and how the gimbal looks like. You can see how far it is extended and you can see that I'm using an external microphone plugged in directly because we have a uh, headphone jack into the Xperia 1 Mark III which is pretty cool and awesome and this is what you can expect in terms of stabilization with the two-axis gimbal. Is it better than the other ones? Hmm, I have my doubts a little bit but the cool thing about using such a solution is that you can use your main camera on your smartphone in the back of your smartphone which has usually a very large sensor with nice background blur but also the possibility to autofocus. So if I want to show you my 
Sony HDR X3000. I can go pretty close here and show you the details of this one here and it should be able to focus on it without big issues. So what do you think about this solution? I think this solution here with the Sony XDR 3000 is the simplest and easiest. You can just plug in a microphone if you want to and you're good to go. The little problem with this is you don't have any way to monitor stuff because there is no monitor on here. There's no way to see what you filmed. There is an accessory kit that you can put on your wrist that will show you what you are filming. But then you have Wi-Fi enabled, you have Bluetooth enabled and this will drain the battery pretty quickly. The good thing about this you can get new batteries here and then just replace batteries and yeah, start filming again. So it has like the potential of being a very good vlogging camera still in 2021. One of the best I would say also in regard regards to stabilization. I really would wish Sony would do an update on this one with autofocus with an updated sensor maybe as large as the one on the Xperia 1 Mark III. I have autofocus as well enabled and maybe some sort of zooming option if it's possible even and uh, yeah a better auto autofocus system a better uh, image stabilization system more high dynamic range that would be pretty awesome for this little camera otherwise i think a normal smartphone like the madex s that i have here is a special one because i had two screens it's a foldable uh, has of course the advantage that it's very very stable already and has an ultra wide angle in this case also ultra wide angle that can do autofocus which is pretty nice it has nice colors and so on and stabilization is pretty good so our smartphones especially in the higher class are getting so good at uh, doing videos that you probably don't need any gimbal like I'm using here right now that you can get without a gimbal get get through all my videos most of them are done without any gimbal attached and they're working pretty nicely and fine uh, they're calling a dog right now uh, in the background you may be seeing it uh, I don't know anyway uh, this is uh, the gimbal camera on the Xperia 1 Mark III what do you think write it down in the comment section which solution you prefer which one would you get I think they are all a little bit pricey. This one is still, even if it's five years plus old, very pricey still. It's, uh, yeah, not in the same ballpark as the Made XS or the Xperia 1 Mark III, but still, uh, this is a pricey option. But you can get away with, uh, yeah, maybe a little bit of cheaper smartphones. Uh, do I have a cheaper smartphone anyway? I think I have an Xperia 10 Mark III, which costs around 400. Uh, maybe we can get away with 300, 350 somewhere used. Uh, that can also do fantastic stuff if you use it correctly, like uh, put it on a normal gimbal if you want to. Maybe I'll do it as well to show you how this will look like. But what do you think about in general smartphone uh, photography, smartphone videography, vlogs and gimbals? Which one is the clear winner in terms of stability? And which one is the clear winner in terms of vlogability and portability? Uh, I'm for this, uh, but I have to say the Made XS is my go-to, is still one of the best, even a year after, is still one of the best because you can just hand hold it, uh, have the thing working, have a microphone attached, have it in your pocket, works as a smartphone as well. <laughs> it's just fantastic to use this, but this is also a very good and maybe cheaper solution that you might come to love as well, especially if you don't want to see yourself. Like I'm also not seeing myself here on this camera right now. Just have to check afterwards if I'm in focus, if everything's working fine, if the audio is there and so on. So uh, now a short sample of the Xperia 10 Mark III and then we will sum up this whole thing. You can write down in the meantime already what you think about this solution and which solution you prefer to use for your videos eventually when you are able to travel next year hopefully again and do some vlogs. So uh, now recording on the Xperia 10 Mark III's main camera with the Xeon Smooth X gimbal using the Google camera port and an external microphone so the external microphone works pretty nicely. It's a bit windy so excuse the wind noises I try to hide them a little bit but it's really really windy and I don't have my uh, wireless microphone with this little wind filter here pop filter or dead cat or dead kitten 
So the stabilization, I think, on the smooth axis is working fine. How is focusing system? The focusing system works pure 10 Mark III. Uh, the main camera is not the largest sensor, but this is what you can expect in terms of yeah, mid-range, entry-level mid-range devices. Are they good for vlogging as well? If you have like a gimbal like this, um, I think they can work as well. And depending on the mid-range device you have, like the Xiaomi devices usually have better cameras in terms of autofocusing and in terms of larger sensors, this might also work for uh, vlogging as well. So what do you think? Is this a better solution with a smartphone and a gimbal, which is still a little bit expensive or just getting for the same money the Sony XDR 3000 that is like more pocketable, I would say, in a way, uh, and has a probably better stabilization as well, but is more pocketable, especially when it comes to yeah, the gimbal, which is like the heaviest and probably yeah, another device that you have to charge as well. Um, when it comes to recording and recording time and so on, there's no limit at all on uh, smartphones usually, so you can record also the same unlimited until your battery is empty or you run full of memory. But usually you have a bit more memory and you can put micro SD cards and have an internal memory card as well. Here you can also put like a memory card and exchange the memory card if you want to. But yeah, this is what you can expect in terms of uh, quality of the Xperia 10 Mark III. And yeah, what do you think about this? And uh, this is basically everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you like this, like, subscribe, and until the next time, bye.